In mathematics, especially order theory, a partially ordered set formalizes and generalizes the intuitive concept of an ordering, sequencing, or arrangement of the elements of a set. A posit consists of a set together with a binary relation that indicates that, for certain pairs of elements in the set, one of the elements precedes the other. Such a relation is called a partial order to reflect the fact that not every pair of elements need be related. For some pairs, it may be that neither element precedes the other in the posit. Thus, partial orders generalize the more familiar total orders, in which every pair is related. A finite posit can be visualized through its Hasse diagram, which depicts the ordering relation. A familiar real-life example of a partially ordered set is a collection of people ordered by genealogical descendancy. Some pairs of people bear the descendant-ancestor relationship, but other pairs bear no such relationship. Formal definition. A partial order is a binary relation, over a set P which is reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive, i.e., which satisfies for all A, B, and C and P. A, a. If a B and B A, then A equals B. If a B and B C, then a C. In other words, a partial order is an anti-symmetric pre-order. A set with a partial order is called a partially ordered set. The term ordered set is sometimes also used, as long as it is clear from the context that no other kind of order is meant. In particular, totally ordered sets can also be referred to as ordered sets, especially in areas where these structures are more common than poses. For A, B, elements of a partially ordered set P, if A B or B A, then A and B are comparable, otherwise they are incomparable. In the figure on top right, e.g., X and X, Y, Z are comparable, while X and Y are not. A partial order under which every pair of elements is comparable is called a total order or linear order. A totally ordered set is also called a chain. A subset of a posit in which no two distinct elements are comparable is called an anti-chain. An element A is said to be covered by another element B, written a less than B. If A is strictly less than B and no third element C fits between them, formally, if both a B and a B true, and a CB is false for each C with a CB, a more concise definition will be given below using the strict order corresponding to, for example, X is covered by X, Z in the top right figure, but not by X, Y, Z. Examples Standard examples of poses arising in mathematics include, the real numbers ordered by the standard less than or equal relation the set of subsets of a given set ordered by inclusion. Similarly, the set of sequences ordered by subsequence, and the set of strings ordered by substring. The set of natural numbers equipped with the relation of divisibility. The vertex set of a directed acyclic graph ordered by reachability. The set of subspaces of a vector space ordered by inclusion. For a partially ordered set P, the sequence space containing all sequences of elements from P, where sequence A precedes sequence B if every item in A precedes the corresponding item in B, formally, NN if and only if and BN for all N in, i.e., a component-wise order, a fence, a partially ordered set defined by an alternating sequence of order relations A less than B greater than C less than D, extrema. There are several notions of greatest and least element in a posit P, notably, greatest element and least element. An element G in P is a greatest element if for every element A in P, A G. An element M in P is a least element if for every element A in P, A M. A posit can only have one greatest or least element. Maximal elements and minimal elements. An element G in P is a maximal element if there is no element A in P such that A greater than G. Similarly, an element M in P is a minimal element if there is no element A in P such that A less than M. If a posit has a greatest element, it must be the unique maximal element, but otherwise there can be more than one maximal element. And similarly for least elements and minimal elements, upper and lower bounds. 
For a subset A of P, an element X in P is an upper bound of A for X, for each element are in A. In particular, X need not be in A to be an upper bound of A. Similarly, an element X in P is a lower bound of A for X, for each element are in A. A greatest element of P is an upper bound of P itself, and a least element is a lower bound of P. For example, consider the positive integers, ordered by divisibility. 1 is a least element, as it divides all other elements, on the other hand this pose it does not have a greatest element. This partially ordered set does not even have any maximal elements, since any g divides for instance 2 grams, which is distinct from it. So g is not maximal. If the number 1 is excluded, while keeping divisibility as ordering on the elements greater than 1, then the resulting posit does not have a least element, but any prime number is a minimal element for it. In this posit, 60 is an upper bound of the subset 2, 3, 5, 10, which does not have any lower bound. On the other hand, 2 is a lower bound of the subset of powers of 2, which does not have any upper bound. Orders on the Cartesian product are partially ordered sets. In order of increasing strength, i.e., decreasing sets of pairs, three of the possible partial orders on the Cartesian product of two partially ordered sets are the lexicographical order, if a less than C or the product order, if a C and B D. The reflexive closure of the direct product of the corresponding strict orders, if or, all three can similarly be defined for the Cartesian product of more than two sets. Applied to ordered vector spaces over the same field, the result is in each case also an ordered vector space. See also orders on the Cartesian product of totally ordered sets. Sums are partially ordered sets. Another way to combine two poses is the ordinal sum, z equals x, y, defined on the union of the underlying sets x and y by the order of z, b if and only if, a, b x with an x, b, or, a, b y with a y, b, or, an x and b y. If two poses are well ordered, then so is their ordinal sum, strict and non-strict partial orders. In some contexts, the partial order defined above is called non-strict partial order. In these contexts, a strict partial order, less than, is a binary relation that is irreflexive, transitive and asymmetric, i.e., which satisfies for all A, B, and C in P, not a less than A. If a less than B and B less than C then a less than C, and, if a less than B then not B less than A, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between all non-strict and strict partial orders. If is a non-strict partial order, then the corresponding strict partial order less than is the irreflexive kernel given by a less than b if a b and a b conversely, if less than is a strict partial order, then the corresponding non-strict partial order is the reflexive closure given by a b if a less than b or a equals b. This is the reason for using the notation, using the strict order less than, the relation A is covered by B, can be equivalently rephrased as a less than B, but not a less than C less than B for any C. Strict partial orders are useful because they correspond more directly to direct to day cyclic graphs. Every strict partial order is a DAG, and the transitive closure of a DAG is both a strict partial order and also a DAG itself. Inverse an order dual. The inverse or converse of a partial order relation satisfies x, y if and only if y, x. The inverse of a partial order relation is reflexive, transitive, and anti-symmetric, and hence itself a partial order relation. The order dual of a partially ordered set is the same set with the partial order relation replaced by its inverse. The irreflexive relation greater than is to is less than is to. Any one of the four relations, less than, and greater than on a given set uniquely determines the other three. In general two elements x and y of a partial order may stand in any of four mutually exclusive relationships to each other, either x less than y, or x equals y, or x greater than y, or x and y are incomparable. A totally ordered set is one that rules out this fourth possibility. All pairs of elements are comparable and we then say that trichotomy holds. The natural numbers, the integers, the rationals, 
and the rails are all totally ordered by their algebraic magnitude whereas the complex numbers are not. This is not to say that the complex numbers cannot be totally ordered. We could for example order them lexicographically via x plus i less than u plus i if and only if x less than u or. But this is not ordering by magnitude in any reasonable sense as it makes 1 greater than 1 0 i. Ordering in by absolute magnitude yields a preorder in which all pairs are comparable. But this is not a partial order since 1 and i have the same absolute magnitude but are not equal, violating anti-symmetry. Mappings between partially ordered sets. Given two partially ordered sets and a function f. ST is called order preserving, or monotone, or isotone, if for all X and Y in S, XY implies FF, if is also a partially ordered set, and both F, ST and G, TU are order preserving, the composition, SU is order preserving, 2, a function F. ST is called order reflecting if for all X and Y in S, FF implies XY. If F is both order preserving and order reflecting, then it is called an order embedding of into. In the latter case, F is necessarily injective, since F equals F implies XY and YX. If an order embedding between two poses S and T exists, one says that S can be embedded into T. If an order embedding F, ST is bijective, it is called an order isomorphism, and the partial orders in are said to be isomorphic. Isomorphic orders have structurally similar Hasse diagrams. It can be shown that if order preserving maps F, ST and G, TS exist such that GF and FG yields the identity function on S and T, respectively, then S and T are order isomorphic. For example, a mapping F from the set of natural numbers to the power set of natural numbers can be defined by taking each number to the set of its prime divisors. It is order preserving. If x divides y, then each prime divisor of x is also a prime divisor of y. However, it is neither injective nor order reflecting. Taking instead each number to the set of its prime power divisors defines a map G. That is order preserving, order reflecting, and hence an order embedding. It is not an order isomorphism, but it can be made one by restricting its co-domain to G. The right picture shows a subset of an its isomorphic image under G. The construction of such an order isomorphism into a power set can be generalized to a wide class of partial orders, called distributive lattices. C. Birkhoff's representation theorem. Number of partial orders. Sequence A001035 in OEIS gives the number of partial orders on a set of n labeled elements. The number of strict partial orders is the same as that of partial orders. If we count only up to isomorphism, we get 1, 1, 2, 5, 16, 63, 318. Linear extension. A partial order asterisk on a set X is an extension of another partial order on X provided that for all elements X and Y of X, whenever X, Y, it is also the case that X asterisk Y. A linear extension is an extension that is also a linear order. Every partial order can be extended to a total order. In computer science, algorithms for finding linear extensions of partial orders are called topological sorting. In category theory, every poser may be considered as a category in which every HOM set has at most one element. More explicitly, let HOM equals if x, y, n equals. Posers are equivalent to one another if and only if they are isomorphic. In opposite, the smallest element, if it exists, is an initial object, and the largest element, if it exists, is the terminal object. Also, every preordered set is equivalent to opposite. Finally, every subcategory of opposite is isomorphism closed. Partial orders in topological spaces. If P is a partially ordered set that has also been given the structure of a topological space, then it is customary to assume that a B is a closed subset of the topological product space. Under this assumption partial order relations are well behaved at limits in the sense that if and I by for all I, then a B 
Interval. For a B, the closed interval A, B, is the set of elements X satisfying or X B. It contains at least the elements A and B. Using the corresponding strict relation, less than, the open interval is the set of elements X satisfying a less than X less than B. An open interval may be empty even if a less than B. For example, the open interval on the integers is empty since there are no integers i such that 1 less than i less than 2. Sometimes the definitions are extended to allow a greater than b, in which case the interval is empty. The half-open intervals a, b, and, using the interval notation, the property a is covered by b, can be rephrased equivalently as a, b, equals a, b. This concept of an interval in a partial order should not be confused with the particular class of partial orders known as the interval orders.